All right, today we are going to continue our work with benchmark fractions. And today we're going to be incorporating in estimation using benchmarks. So first, go ahead and take down your skeleton notes for this page. You can pause. And once you have this one finished, you may take down your skeleton notes for the next page. Pause. Now let's begin. First, we're going to just make some representations for some of our benchmark fractions. We're going to be focusing on halves, fourths, and thirds. We're going to use a number line and we're going to use some models. Now I want to draw your attention to my models. They are all very, I mean, as close um, to the, exactly the same as I can do free-handed. So I didn't measure anything, I just eyeballed this. So as you can see, I wanna have my rectangles as close uh, to shape and size as possible to each other. And you can see I split them all down um, at the one half point. And then the ones I'm gonna use for the thirds, they're already split into thirds and they look exactly the same. So um, let's take a look first at one half on our number line. So on the number line, I have a zero and a one. Right in between the zero and one is of course one half. Now, if you are going to go into fourths, you simply split your number line into four pieces between zero and one. And so in between zero and one half, you would have a one half point. That would be one fourth. And then in between the one half and the one would be another halfway point, And this would be three fourths. So let's figure out if this is zero, this is one fourth. We go up another fourth, that would be two fourths, which is equivalent to one half, three fourths, and then one whole, which is of course four fourths. And zero fourths, as we determined yesterday, is at zero. Okay, so this number line represents our half, so half, and it represents our fourths. So all of these fractions are benchmark fractions, all right? Now let's go over to our models. And on our first one, we're going to represent one half. So you can see our denominator tells us how many pieces to split our shape into. So our denominator is a two, and I'm already split into two pieces. And I need to represent one out of two or one half. So I would simply shade one of my pieces one half. Now let's do one fourth. Now take a look at our denominator. Our denominator is a four. So, so far we have only split into two pieces. So we need to split this into four pieces that are equal. So in this first half, we're going to split that in half again. And then the other half, we're going to split that in half again. So we're going to have four equal pieces. So one fourth, two fourth, three fourth, four fourth, one whole, okay? We're gonna represent just one fourth with this one. And you can see that one fourth is half of one half. Let's do two fourths. So again, our denominator is a four, so we need four equal pieces. So we're going to split our halves in half again. And this time we're going to shade two out of four. So we're going to shade this guy, that's one out of four. And then this is two out of four. Now, as you can tell, your benchmark one half model is the same as your benchmark two fourths. So two fourths is of course equivalent to one half. Two out of four, two is half of four, okay? So this isn't really, you can identify this as one half, Two fourths, we don't usually use that as a benchmark fraction because we know it is the same thing as one half. Now let's take a look at three fourths. So we need to split our model into four equal pieces. So as you can see, I'm in halves. So now I'm going to split each of my halves again, and that will give me fourths. 
and I need to do three out of the four shaded. So one, two, so I'm at the halfway point there, and then three. So on this one, you can see I'm a little bit bigger, one fourth bigger than one half, all right? Now, if, if I went up to four fourths, of course, I would be all shaded, and that would be one whole. Let's look now at one third. Now this one um, isn't used as much as a benchmark as the one half and the one fourth and the three fourths, but I wanted to show you it just to give you an idea of how one half and one third compare, all right? So as you can see on my number line between zero and one, I have split into three equal pieces. My denominator tells me how many pieces on the number line to split into as well, okay? So between zero and one, I should have three equal pieces. One, two, three, we're good there. My first equal piece is one third. Go up one more, two thirds. So one whole would be three thirds. And of course, zero would be zero thirds. So zero thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds, okay, one whole. Now, let's take a look at our models. So as you can see on our first model, we are split into three pieces because three is our denominator. That tells us how many pieces. Now we're only gonna shade one out of three here. And then our next one we're gonna do is two out of three. So one, two. Now what I wanna do is I wanna compare this to one half. So if you look, I'm gonna use my ruler here. If you look back up at our one half, which is clear at the top here, we are going to compare that to our one third and our two thirds. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna put it on the halfway point there. And you can see that here's one half. So one third right here, you can see it's less than one half because the one halfway point is right here. Okay, the halfway point is right here. Now look at two thirds. Here's the half point. Look, it's a little bit bigger. Do you see that? It's a little bit bigger than one half. So that's a really good guide. So you know that two thirds is a little bit bigger than one half. Now the cool thing is, I showed you this trick yesterday. You know that if you have a three as a denominator and you wanna figure out what is its equivalent fraction in one half, you would say, okay, well, what is half of three? Half of three is one and a half. So 1.5 out of three is the same as one half, okay? So this right here, this line right here in the halfway would be 1.5 out of three. Kind of cool. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna use this to do some estimates and then we're actually going to solve some problems. So first, we're gonna look at number one. We're gonna estimate, then we're going to add or subtract. So let's look at number one here. We have one and four fifths plus two and two thirds. So I'm gonna first focus on one and four fifths and I'm going to come up with an estimate. Now I know that four fifths is nearly one whole, isn't it? Because if I had five fifths, that would be another whole. So that would be very close to the whole number two. Now what I wanna do is I wanna decide is it closer up to one whole or is it closer to one half? So I wanna to think to myself, well, what would, if I were in fifths, what would the equivalent fraction for one half be? So let's think about that. What is half of five? Half of five is two and a half. So half of five is 2.5. So if you look, my four is 1.5 away from two and a half. And then if you look at one whole, five out of five, Four-fifths is actually very close to this one, isn't it? 
So I would probably, for my estimate, I would go for counting the four-fifths as a one. So I would say, okay, one and five-fifths, which is the same as two, okay? So I turn this four-fifths into another one. And then look at the other one. It's two and two-thirds. So actually, two-thirds is kind of a benchmark fraction. So you have two choices here. <coughs> you could either just keep it as two and two-thirds, or you could bump up your two-thirds to, I mean, you could even call it a one-half, actually, couldn't you? So it's up to you. I would probably just leave it as it is because it's already a benchmark, okay? You already kind of know some things about two-thirds. It's right here. So then we could add this in our heads. So this would be whole number four and then the fraction two-thirds. So the estimate is going to be fairly close to four and a half, okay? It's fairly close to four and a half. Now let's add it for real. So we're going to look at our denominators and we're going to notice that they do not have the same size pieces. So our denominators need to match. So we have a five and a three. So we need to think to ourselves, well, what could we turn both of those into to make them match? In this case, we would choose 15. And sometimes it's actually when you multiply the two denominators together, you can get that common denominator. So that's the case here. So we're gonna turn everything into 15s. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring down my one, and I'm going to know that I'm going to turn this one into 15s. I'm adding. I'm gonna bring down my two, and I'm also going to turn this three into 15s. Now we have to figure out how to do it, okay? So we say, how do we turn a five into a 15? So what could we multiply five by to turn it into a 15? The answer is three. Now, if you multiply the bottom by three, guess what? You have to multiply the top by three. So this one would be a 15 on bottom, which we have, and then look at the top. The top's gonna be a 12 now. So there's its equivalent fraction, 12 fifteenths is the same as 4 fifths. Now let's do the other one. Uh, how are we going to turn a 3 into a 15? I hope you remembered that it was times 5. So if you times this by 5, the bottom, you have to multiply the top by 5 as well. <coughs> so that's going to actually be 2 times 5 on top, which is 10, and 3 times 5 on bottom, which we have, 15. Now we have the same size pieces and we are set up to add, right? So that's kind of nice. So we're gonna say, okay, well, my fractional part, I have 12 fifteenths plus 10 fifteenths. So that's gonna be, oh goodness, I see a um, fraction greater than one. So that's gonna be 22 fifteenths. Do you all see it? You see your top is bigger than your bottom? So he's top heavy, isn't he? We have to fix that in a sec. Then we have a one whole number and a two whole number. So that is three. Now, let's turn the 22 fifteenths into um, an actual mixed number. So this is fraction greater than one, so we need to work on this a little. So you do this by saying 22 divided by 15, okay? So find a good spot. I'm gonna do it down here, 22 inside divided by 15, and we have a blank, blank. 15 goes into two zero times. Zero times 15 is zero. Subtract, bring down. So we have 15 into 22, of course, is going to only go once, not quite two. One times 15 is 15. Now be careful here when you subtract, you have to borrow that two turns into a one, and this two turns into a 12. So now we have 12 take away five, which is seven, and then the zero. Now our seven, we can actually take up as our numerator, and then our denominator is our divisor. One and seven fifteenths, so look at what that is. Seven fifteenths is really close to one half, isn't it? So then we're gonna put it with our three. So we have to put our existing, so this we already got rid of. All right, we took it down and we divided it out right here. So now it's in a different form. It's one and seven fifteenths. So we need to put it with this. Look at our final answer. 
we have four as our whole number and seven fifteenths as our fraction. So let's compare it to our estimate. Pretty close, isn't it? So this we knew was really close to one half and look, this is very close to one half. So there we go. This is our final answer. And then this was our estimate. Okay, let's look at number two. So we have three and three fifths, subtract one and one fifth. Now, I'm gonna try to decide what I should do here with the three fifths. So I know in my fifths, one half would be 2.5 out of five, two and a half out of five, okay? Look how close this is to one half. You see that? So let's do for our estimate, let's do three and a half, and then we're subtracting here, one and one fifth. Now one fifth is super duper close to zero. It's, t it's pretty small. So I'm just gonna call, I'm just gonna get rid of that fraction and just call this a one. So in this case, I would just say three and a half minus one. So it would be two and a half, and that is my estimate. Okay, now let's go to our actual problem. And we're going to do three and three fifths minus one and one fifth. And guess what? I'm so excited because my denominators match. I don't even have to fix them up. They're perfect as they are. So we get to just proceed. So we're gonna say, okay, well, three fifths minus one fifth is two fifths. And then three minus one is two. So look at our answer compared to our estimate. So we have two and two fifths, and then we have two and a half. So if this was gonna be two and a half, it would just be two and 2.5 out of five. So it's actually very close to our estimate. So that was a great estimate, right? Okay, let's go on to number three. For this one, we are again subtracting and oh gosh, I see I have like two benchmark fractions here actually. So that's kind of unusual, but so let's do an estimate. Now here's the thing. Do you see we have a fourths and a half? So maybe we could just quickly make those match, right? Just in our head really. So I know that two out of four is the same thing as one half. And I know that this one.